You're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. You're gonna make it. <laughs> You're doing it. You're doing it. Loving it. He's been awesome. Everyone seems to love him. All right, buddy. Not too much. Not too much. Nice and easy. I think they really like the support. I mean, they're almost done. He's out here cheering all these people and he doesn't know them at all. And I think they really enjoy it. Isn't this a ball? <laughs> it beats running. <laughs> Bad girl, go get him. Thank you. Flying along. All right, guy. All right. <laughs> hey, girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go get your shirt. Yeah, go get it. It boosts them, especially at this part of the race because they're almost at the end. They're exhausted and they're pushing themselves very hard. And it's good to see somebody there, you know, helping them go forward. Oh, yes, girl. Okay, buddy. Mr. Bloomsday. Mr. Bloomsday. She wants to run in Bloomsday. Yeah. She wants to start training. <laughs> She's five, so we'll get there. Chin strap. Good. As part of this very realistic training, Fairchild Swimming Pool takes on the appearance of a Hollywood soundstage with simulated lightning, wind, and spray, all conditions that airmen might experience ditching at sea. It's Fairchild's new aquatic center, home to early morning swimmers, but transformed in less than a half hour to the survival school's dunking tank. With the wind, the lightning, and, and the wave generator, we can create very realistic open water scenarios uh, to give it as much realism to the training as the students can get. In this scenario, the crew aboard an air tanker is told their plane is going down 60 miles off the Alaskan coastline. They have just two minutes to don their survival suits and then the lights go out as the mock-up splashes down in the pool. Chain up! Make sure you do a good chain! The airmen have to get out of their sinking plane and into their life rafts before they freeze to death. They'll make their way to the raft get into the raft and then as you probably will see in the video there's hoses going on and we're splashing them pretty pretty well with it so they get their canopy up as fast as possible to get themselves out of the elements. Students hunker down in their rafts until they're hoisted out of the sea by a rescue helicopter. Instructors want to give students the confidence they can survive even ditching at sea in the darkness. Oh, it was incredible. Once you're actually in underneath the tarp on the raft, you can't even you can't even tell the difference that you're, you know, just in a swimming pool. It's it's so much more than that once you're actually in the raft. To other fires in our region, we begin with Alyssa Donovan live in Okanagan County. Alyssa? Well, Nadine, unfortunately, scenes like this one are becoming all too familiar out here at the Okanagan Complex fire. Burned out homes, property, and land. And while firefighters work to prevent more scenes like this one, businesses are working to help those who have been displaced. One business in particular is going above and beyond. A pink and smoky sun. That's what people woke up to here in the Home Depot parking lot this morning. Several families have camped out here, waiting to hear if and when they can return home. Home Depot's been great, let us sit here. and uh, I went in to buy a couple of chairs and they gave them to me. And the use of their parking lot and a couple of chairs is the smallest part of what the home improvement store is doing to help. Employees are passing out free meals, collecting donations, even letting people stay in the store. I work for Home Depot. My normal shift is the overnight. Daryl Mirando is one of many employees that has been staying to help on his own time. This is just what we do. If there's something like this going on anywhere in this country, you'll find Home Depot. We have our store unlocked all night long. We've got an area clear out that's usually a showroom for product. Um, we just wiped it out clean. Um, you know, we got patio furniture pads if they need them. Uh, just help help keep them comfortable. This war veteran doesn't know if his home is still standing. He's been evacuated and has been living inside of the store. The employees built him a bed. Well, I couldn't let the guy sleep on the floor. You know, I got room and I got stuff, so let's put it together and try to get him as comfortable as possible through all this. He didn't want to talk on camera, but he did say he was grateful to the workers. These people need help, and we're here to help them. 
And of course, Home Depot is actually opening its doors for 24 hours a day. It's never going to close. And they said you can drop off donations for those displaced by the fire. They're taking anything at this point. And coming up tonight on KXLY 4 News at 6, we'll have more details from the fire lines. Nadine. All right, looking forward to that. Thank you, Alyssa. It's an incredible blessing for the nuns of Mount St. Michael and the children who go to school here to be able to live and learn in a building with such incredible history. But trying to operate in a 100 year old building is also their biggest curse. And that is the important thing, right? Spending time with the family and doing fun things. Speaking of fun things, here's my completed snowman. Uh, I put my hat on the snowman. It, it turns out when you do that, you actually turn into the snowman. So uh, I hope all of you back at the station like it because this is uh, how I will be returning. <laughs> Reporting somewhat live tonight, I'm Allie Norton, KXLY 4 News. Well, Derek, investigators say they got a tip earlier this month that he had been exchanging sex with minors for prescription drugs, and that's exactly what he was allegedly doing here at the O'Connell Lodge. Nadine, it hasn't even been 24 hours since Donald Trump was elected president, but many people I talked to today are still discussing all the things that happened on the campaign trail leading up to this election. We stopped here at Ferguson's Diner today to see how people are feeling after last night. One thing's for certain, this election was stressful. We've been drinking a lot of coffee because I stayed up until two last Watching night. Ferguson's Diner is 75 years old. How would you like our eggs cooked? It stood through 20 different presidential elections and seen its share of colorful conversations. Honestly, I thought it'd be close, cool, but I didn't think so. I didn't think Trump was going to win. In this election. Trump has this weird charisma. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. really important. We didn't have it. Is no different. We need to come together somehow and maybe this will be our, well, our chance. The lunch rush at Ferguson's Diner looks the same as it did yesterday. Can I get you white yeah. meat or sourdough toast? But just hours after one of the nation's most heated political seasons, people have mixed feelings on last night's results and what went wrong in Hillary Clinton's campaign. These well, things is about perception. Even though Hillary didn't have anything real bad in her emails, the perception that she did brought her down these last two weeks. That's true. President-elect Donald Trump called on the nation to unite, saying it's now time for America to bind the wounds of division. But some have their doubts. He said that he didn't like the Republican Party and that they, you know, they were not cooperating with him. So how are they going to cooperate with him now? That's my question. While the election is the soup du jour, it's not the whole entree. The pancakes are really good, too. For most of us, life just goes on. And places like Ferguson's will be here when the next election comes our way. It just gets so crazy, and everyone just kind of loses their mind. It has been a busy past two weeks for the folks at the Jiffy Stop in Post Falls. We had constant lines on Saturday, and like it never stopped. Katie LaPreth will tell you, this is just one of the many places feeling the frenzy for Powerball. The machine, and it kept crashing, and then coming back up, and then crashing, and then coming back up. The printer kept jamming. We ran out of paper like four times. It's just ridiculous. The old adage is, you can't win if you don't play. But that's not necessarily true. Since November 5th, the Idaho Lottery has sold $12.3 million in tickets. Those sales mean big bucks at an unlikely place. Every dollar helps. <laughs> Inside the classroom at Betty Kiefer Elementary in Raftrum. Over the years, they've been able to better protect your kids, all thanks to lottery dollars. So one of the things that the Idaho lottery dollars are helping to fund is new security features uh, like this camera and phone system at Betty Kiefer Elementary. In Idaho last year, the lottery gave $46 million to K through 12 schools and to the public facilities statewide, mostly higher education. It all works to support um, what we do every day with our kids and that's to provide a quality education. Back at the Jiffy Stop in Post Falls, that frenzy continues. Employees working as fast as they can, trying to keep up with customers chasing that dream of being a millionaire and helping our kids with every ticket. She is the pretty face of Spokane's ugly heroin problem. 18-year-old Rachel Myers was a caring person who defended other students from bullies and helped people who needed it the most. For example, I was uh, picking her up at Northtown and uh, 
was calling on the cell phone, where are you out, why are you out in front where you're supposed to be, and she finally picked up the phone and she said, Dad, I'm helping an old lady with her bags down to the bus stop. That was even after Rachel had started using heroin. Her father, Scott, thinks Rachel self-medicated after she was sexually assaulted during a concert at the Gorge. Scott took his daughter to rehab, but because of a Washington state law that gives teens their own health care rights, he couldn't make Rachel stay in treatment. They have the right to say yes or no uh, to their own medical care. And so once they're 13, you, you can't force them to get any um, treatment for substance abuse. And so Rachel's addiction persisted. Her father took these pictures in her bedroom, hoping the photos of Rachel in possession of heroin would lead to her arrest. If she's arrested and gets put in jail, then, then I know where she is every night and I know that she's not doing drugs. Scott says he's disappointed sheriff's deputies didn't arrest Rachel because she could have been forced into rehab through drug court. Then on March 30th, Scott got a phone call from paramedics and rushed to Rachel's grandparents' home where she died of a drug overdose. And went to give her a kiss on her forehead and her eyes were open. And uh, that's something that'll never, ever, um, ever leave me is to look into your, own, your, your daughter's eye, uh, lifeless eyes. Scott blames himself for Rachel's death but is fighting for a change in the law and the creation of lockdown rehab centers. My goal is... Uh, is to move forward, is to, is to change the legislation. I figure it's a, it's a cliche, but if I can save one child's life, then you know what I mean, and keep one parent from having to go through what I've done, then I feel like I've you know had a modicum of, of su success. If you're looking for a way to stay warm this month, you can always walk into the Northwest Museum of Art and Culture and downstairs to the Lost Egypt exhibit. This museum is so much fun. There is something for every age. There's a lot of hands-on. It's not just for the kids. The adults have so much fun here too. The many hands-on activities include physically challenging stations, like hauling replica pyramid stones. Building a pyramid's not so bad. And mentally stimulating exercises, like building a block pyramid to scale, or putting back together a shattered vase. But without question, the leading lady of the show is Annie the 2,300-year-old mummy of a 17-year-old Egyptian girl. We usually get two different kinds of reactions. There's some kids that come in that are terrified that there's an actual mummy downstairs. They think of the movies where these mummies are going to chase you, and then as soon as they come down and they actually see what's going on and have these fun things to do, they come upstairs and they leave with a huge grin on their face. Unfortunately, the Spokane portion of the nationwide tour ends January 6th. So this holiday season, if you're looking to uncover some ancient secrets and learn some modern science in the process, head on down to the Lost Egypt exhibit. Reporting from the Northwest Museum of Arts and Culture, Jack Ferris, KXLY4 News.